All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem, and you're tuned in to Crush to be on Dust only on Metal Devastation Radio. And I have Raven from the band Raven Black on the line. How are you doing tonight? Hey, how are you doing? Everything's going uh, well. It's cold here in Michigan. Um, I'm guessing you're warm in Cali, right? I am. I was cold last week when I was there, so we got snowed in. <laughs> it is very cold in Michigan. Yeah, you played in Detroit, right? Uh, no, we played in Mount Pleasant. That's uh, my guitarist, uh, the doctor. His oh. hometown is Mount, Mount Pleasant. But we had a sold-out show. Um, I do want to say something. There was like 30 people that were turned away uh, because, you know, the, the venue basically reached capacity, so they couldn't bring anybody in. Uh, but we did pre-sales, so next time, you know, get your tickets early. Uh, we plan to do kind of a hometown show on every tour, so... You know, keep that in mind. That's awesome. You'll have to let me know or remind me because I'm only an hour from Mount Pleasant. Oh, well, that's awesome. Definitely, I would love to meet you in person. So, i definitely love to come uh, see you guys live for sure. So, why don't we start if you could introduce yourself. I mean, I know I've already introduced you, but in your spot in the band. And then also the rest yeah. of the band that's not with us tonight as well. Okay, so I'm Raven. I'm the lead singer. Um, and then there is Muppet on drums. Uh, and then... The Doctor on guitar, and Stitches on bass. And it's just the four of us. All right, very good. And before we get into it, um, uh, Grace, she's one of the DJ Thunderous. She's one of the DJs here. She is a huge fan uh, of you and the band. So if you could just give a huge shout-out, I know it would, like, make her Christmas. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, Grace, uh, love to meet you soon in person. Uh, make sure um, you give me a you know, hit me up. So we can put you both on a guest list once we're in Michigan again, playing a show. But I'd love to have both of you out. Yeah, she's actually in New, in New York. That's one of the things about when we were talking off air, talking about uh, DJs. We have DJs uh, um, in multiple different countries all uh, all, all over. So yeah, it's really cool. That's great. Well, Chris, uh, you're in New York. We do come through New York a lot. Uh, I think last time we were down in Queens, Long Island, Rochester, so upstate New York, um, Brooklyn. So um, we'll be back in New York. New York's a good spot for us. Very good. So what is going on with Raven Black right now? I feel like you may have mentioned you just got done with the tour. Yep. Uh, we just went out on tour for six weeks with Psycho Stick, artists, uh, Arsonist Get All the Girls, and uh, Kissing Candace. And they're from New York, actually. Uh, but, yeah, just had a six-week run. It was kind of a long tour. Um, cold. Uh, there was some snow, but I think we kind of managed to beat the weather each time we left the state and went to went on to another state, kind of just missed the snow. Um, but yeah, we just got back. Um, I think we just, we took a couple of days off and then did our final uh, one-off show in Michigan, um, in Chris's hometown, so in Mount Pleasant. And now I'm back in L.A., um, Muppet and I are both back in L.A., and uh, we're all doing family time for Christmas, and then we're hitting the studios in mid-January. Very good. Well, and once again, I want to thank you for taking the time to, uh, you know, do the interview tonight. I know it is right around the holidays and everything, so much appreciated. No, I appreciate the support. Uh, we, you know, we definitely need the support. We appreciate everybody that plays our music. Um, he's even, you know, thinking about us and uh, helping promote and get our name out there. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So how long has Raven Black been around as a band? How, how long have you guys been doing this? Wow. So I get this question a lot. So Muppet and I, um, you know, we're married. So we both were playing in different bands uh, when we met and dating. Um, and then we decided to form our own band. And the original band was the Raven Black Project. Um, and literally that that's what, what the name came up was. I was going to see how this was going to go. And I had a vision. Uh, but we changed our lineup. So that started in 2012. And uh, we then revamped the entire lineup, uh, new guitarist, new bass player, new music, new vision, new look, everything um, in 2015. So we've only been out on the road since October of last year. Um, but we took two years of writing all brand new music, recreating everything um, before we came back out. So technically, I mean, you know, we're, we're 2015, I would say, was the start of Blade and Black. Uh, cool. And, and while we're on on the subject, um, how how'd you guys come up with the name for the band? I guess wh where's the whole Raven Black thing come from? Well, Raven's my name, <laughs> and then um, my my last name didn't um, really fit the band. 
So, um, I, you know, with the Raven Black Project, the Black Project was actually the band. Uh, Raven has always been me. Uh, so with the new lineup, we just kept it simple and cut it short to Raven Black. I mean, it's pretty much that simple. <laughs> um, and then we're a dark metal carnival, so we, we figured Black was the appropriate uh, name. You know, we'd actually, I probably would have loved to just have the name Black um, as our band name, but it was just too short. Nice. I was looking at the, um, from the link you sent me, at some of the, the posters and stuff, and the one that's, uh -huh. you know, kind of more the, you know, like on the cartoon side of things. And oh, yeah, the comic book. Yeah, yeah, comic book, that's the word, thank you. Um, <laughs> who, who, who did that artwork? Because that's real. it looks really cool. Um, the artist's name is JP, and he actually is from the Philippines. Um, and I got in touch with him online, and we communicated, and I gave him my concept and pictures of us and uh, told him I'm a big, huge fan of Tim Burton. Um, so if he could keep it in that style versus, you know, superhero DC comics or Marvel, um, kind of wanted our characters to, to be closer to who we are. We're a bunch of comics, so <laughs> we're a bunch of cartoons, we're a bunch of goofballs. So, um, you know, I definitely wanted that. And he, uh, he did a first sketch of me. And um, I absolutely fell in love with it and said that's exactly what I was hoping for. Uh, so now he's the illustrator for the comic book. So we'll be coming out with that um, hopefully by spring. Oh, super cool. Super cool. Yeah, I'm working on the storyline now. So um, our first issue, um, probably going to be digital first. Um, and then first, um, I'm going to do some kind of special release where the first 100 printed copies goes out to, um, you know, our super fans and then, um, after that, and, and there's a, a term super fan, and I don't remember where I picked it up, but um, super fans, you know, are VIP fans that are at every single show that buy, they own every single piece of merch. Um, they're, they're on every live feed. They're on every, they comment on every post we do. So, uh, you know, we have a nickname for them that they've kind of adopted, <laughs> which is uh, Raven's Reject. <laughs> and there's a backstory to that. Nice. That's a dedicated <laughs> fan right there, I'm telling you. Yeah, they, they want to be called Raven's Rejects. And, uh, you know, it sounds derogatory, but it's, there's a lot of love there. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, Grace, she's tuned in, actually, and she wants to know um, what... She wants to know, basically, you know, what's the deal with the wheelchair that you use? What's, I guess, uh, what's, be, what's behind that? Well... <laughs> The, the location that we were at, you know, was this huge haunted house in an outdoor desert area, and there was a lot of dirt road, and, um, you know, they have a bunch of stuff there, and, and there was a wheelchair, and, and I, I figured, well, you know what, I need a ride, um, so Muppet was going to just kind of ride me up to where we were filming and shooting um, Seven Sin. So we were setting up, and he was kind of just, you know, riding me around in the wheelchair, and, <laughs> and I really thought about that, like, well, you know what, I'm a doll. I'm half doll, so, and half human, and, and you know, kind of like a stroller. Um, you know, I wanted a vintage stroller, but I couldn't find one. So we kind of just, you know, adopted that into the video. Uh, the director, Billy, was kind of just like, you know, I, I love I love that footage. I mean, yeah, I think you should use it. And I said, okay, well, let's use it. And we had those aerial shots uh, with the drone, and I just thought it was really cool. But, you know, I have a an underlying meaning to it all, which is, you know, um, Basically, you cripple yourself in life, you know, through seven, through your sinning, through things that you do that are good or bad, and um, so that kind of gives that symbolism of, um, you know, any any given day you could become a cripple. You know, you could catch a disease, or you could get sick, or you know, fall into ailment. So you know, you never know. You got to live your life, you know, day by day, and, and live it to the best that you can. Yeah. So there is some a little bit of underlying meaning there. <laughs> no, I mean you're you're so right though. I mean life is so fragile. People lose track of that, you know, and yeah. uh, you just exactly. you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. Exactly. I mean, I have countless fans that are going through a lot of difficult times even now, and they share it with me. And you know, all I can do is, and, and I'm so sure some of them may may or may not be listening, but you know, I genuinely comment back, and and when they private message me, uh, that I literally. I don't know what it is in me, and, and I'm not a superhero or a superpower or anything like that, but I do know one thing about myself, which is I have a lot of love and um, strength 
um, within my spirit, like my soul. And if I could share any part of it, because it feels very abundant in me, um, if I could share any of what I have with anyone who needs it, I send it to them. You know, whether they receive it or not, or it's helping them in any way, uh, we do it through our music, uh, our art, you know, words that I exchange. I, I really genuinely do actually send out my energy to them. So, you know, hopefully it helps them. No, I, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it does. I mean, just think if everybody did, or at least, you know, had, had yeah. thought, thought that way, how, how awesome this world would be. Yeah, I mean, they say mind over matter, you know, if I love paranormal activity, I love, I believe in ghosts, I believe in reincarnation, you know, I believe in a lot of different things that are unexplained, um, and they're unexplained and not proven, um, so all I can say is, you know, I believe that there's something out there more than us, and, uh, you know, I feel that I'm gifted and blessed uh, to have what I have in my life, and if I could share that in any way, I do. Very cool. So, so obviously you have a theme going, you know, with the band. So I guess what, what was the kind of the creative process and, and the thought process that kind of started started that? You, you know, I've been kind of like this way since I, as far as I can remember as a child. And, and you know, I have, a, I have two brothers, an older brother and a younger brother, and I'm kind of grown up as the tomboy, um, trying to keep up with those two um, and being involved. But, you know, it's just one of those things that's... Um, you know, the bratty little sister that will beat up your friend for, for you know, out of being protective of your brothers and, and your friends. And, and I was bullied a lot when I was little. And um, I've been through a lot of um, trauma, you know, as a child. Um, I was very shy. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of, you know, people can relate to that. And then you grow up and you kind of grow tough skin. And, and I'm, I, I've always kind of loved horror and vintage movies and, and history, that's what, that was my favorite subject in school, so, um, but having, like, I guess a realization or epiphany about life being pretty dark at times, and being able to, like, overcome it or um, endure it uh, with, with your inner self, so a lot of it has a lot of, like, I guess sim symbolic, um, underlying meanings of like your who your self identity is like within you that you have to hide you know in society and, and I had to do that a lot um, part of the shyness um, part of being an overachiever trying to be the best that I am so you know a lot of it I kind of blended together in all my favorite things and I found members that have very similar favorite things you know we all love horror we all love metal we all love music we love you know art um we love voodoo we love magic we love mystical fantasy um i happen to love comic books um i love japanese anime i've always loved cosplay so you know all those things kind of blended together is kind of what raven black is and uh, we all love that like kind of twisted scary you know clown carnival um aspect of, of things and and i Loved the circus when, you know, the circus used to come into town. I mean, there are no circuses anymore other than Cirque du Soleil, which I absolutely love. Um, but, you know, all those things blended together. We, we decided we wanted to be a dark metal carnival um, because metal music to me is the most intricate music that exists today. Um, it's still real music, you know, and it derives from classical music and rock. And um, I just think it's so underappreciated and, and devalued um, in our you know, general mainstream today. So I figured a way that theatrically mainstream can handle metal. <laughs> no, I like it. And I want to, and I want to break the ceiling. And I, and we have, you know, um, this past year of touring, we have cross genres. You know, we have country fans, we have pop fans, we have hip hop fans, punk fans. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing that people who love music love music, and I'm, ex you know, we're exposing them to metal, uh, which is exciting to me. Exactly, and that's you know the first time I heard you guys, I was like, "Yep, these guys are badass. <laughs> we we got to play and we got to talk for sure." So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's it's fun. I mean, we try to do it. It's dark, but for some reason, we pull it off where it's it's creepy, but it's fun. Creepy. It's not. You know, it's like Tim Burton. I, I respect him as a director. I mean, he puts out stuff that you know challenges you on the creepy, scary, but it's still 
you could still, you know, you could still take it in. Um, and he's fully mainstream. So I was like, well, if he could do it, you know, and there's Phantom of the Opera and there's all kinds of different horror things, American Horror Story, and, um, you know, Walking Dead and all the stuff. And I was like, I think the world's ready for this. Um, you know, and we're going to, we're going to expose metal music to the rest of the, you know, the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like, keep doing what you're doing, please. That's, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> So, it's a lot of fun, and I love what I do. So ex- I hey, I, I know, I know, I know the feeling. I know the feeling. <laughs> Are so, you a musician? I am not, unfortunately, but I love. I've been a metalhead since. God, I remember uh, growing up and my and and going to sleep with Pantera just rocking out, <laughs> and my dad coming in and told me, telling me to turn that crap off, turn it down. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it's the same thing. I had, you know, Kiss posters and uh, Ozzy and Alice Cooper and all the stuff on my walls. And, and I miss those days. I miss those days when, you know, my brother and I would be in line at Tower Records, you know, waiting for the new release of something. And, and we would buy everything, you know, the button, the poster, the album. Like, it was awesome, you know, and, and it was, we would look forward to it. Um, so I, I, I miss those days and I want to find a way to bring it back you know, to a certain degree, and, and I think we do that in our live shows, we, we, I feel like we are giving our fans, you know, some entertainment, and people need it, because, you know, the world's kind of, kind of really screwed up right now. That's for sure, <laughs> we can definitely yeah. some, we'll use that more, more of that positive energy, okay, Raven? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so, before the question gets asked in the chat, because I know it's gonna, I know it's coming, because um, you mentioned loving, you know, loving horror films and such. What's your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh God! Um, you mean movie, movie, or like old vintage, movie? like any movie? Any. There's so many. Yeah. Um, if you well, had to I pick love, one, <laughs> I love any Dracula movie. Um, now modern day movie, I still love. Um, goodness. I still love, I still love all the Stephen King movies. I, I still, you know, Ryan and I still watch those. You know, we'll go into little marathons and we'll just watch Stephen King movies back to back on a marathon. Um, God, I love Frankenstein. I love all the vintage stuff that are black and white from the 50s. I think those were done in the 50s or 60s, right? Sounds, so like sounds about right. Yeah, we have a collection of, like, vintage movies. Um... What's the one with um, Aaliyah in it? Uh, the Queen of the Damned. Um, I love that. New. That's a newer, modern movie. I mean, as far as, you know, modern movies and not vintage. Uh, what else? Uh, we just watched It yesterday. It's out on Netflix, so we bought it immediately. Uh, I think we were touring when it came out. So we watched that yesterday, and it was awesome. So, you know, Lenny, but I'm a big, huge Stephen King fan, Tim Burton. I've watched every Tim Burton movie at least you know, 50 times. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of my movie collection. Um, sure. I love The Exorcist. I'd have to say that is probably my all-time favorite. If I could pick one, I had to pick one, the original Exorcist. And I actually saw that in the theater when it was released. Oh, wow, super cool. Yeah, I'm aging myself, but I don't I don't lie about my age, so. Hey, you know, <laughs> we have no control over that, so it is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, but Exorcist, I watched it in Hollywood at the theater when it was first released, and I was probably about seven or eight years old. And I covered my eyes and peeked. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So it started a long time ago with me in horror. <laughs> nice. So, okay, shameless uh, promotion plug time for you. Where is a good okay. place for the fans to go find out more about Raven Black? What websites, what social networking, you know, where, where, where do you want the fans to go? Yeah, we're everywhere, but Facebook seems to be the, the number one kind of channel for everybody to see what's going on with us because whatever we do gets posted to Facebook Um, and fans are all on Facebook and even the Instagram posts from fans go to Facebook so Facebook seems to be kind of like the center hub of everything we have and we have everything we have Instagram Twitter um, I think we have a MySpace though we're on Spotify iTunes on Amazon can buy stuff we have Big Cartel we have our website which is ravenblackband.com so we're kind of everywhere, and if you Google us, we're like the first three pages. You can click on any one of those links, and it'll probably take you to YouTube or Facebook or, you know, one of our, our main uh, spots. But Facebook, 
I prefer that because I, I do, you know, communicate with a lot of people on there through private messenger. Um, my my personal page, Raven Black, you know, it's always hitting five thousand friends. So I can't I can't add everybody and I'm and I don't like to delete anyone, so it's really difficult for me to communicate with everyone there. So I just tell everyone to use the BAM Facebook page because I can, you know, talk to them on Messenger. Um, and, you know, there's that ability to, to, to call now. Um, you know, I, so some, sometimes I'm in the mood to, to chat. So once in a great while, somebody will call me through Facebook Messenger and I'll actually pick up. But I, I'm not going to promise I'm going to do it every time. But there's <laughs> right on. That I'm there's the only so much time in the day, right? Yeah, it's a special ringtone and it's a Facebook call, you know, through Messenger. And, you know, there's a, a little girl named Jade, um, and she, she tries to call me a lot. Um, I don't pick up each time because I, I worry about her parents being concerned about her calling on Facebook. <laughs> right. Um, you know, so I'm trying to call You know, one of these days I'm going to pick up and talk to her, and she's probably going to be like, oh, my God, she picked up. Um, but I, I want the, I like those, you know, elements of surprise. Right. Too. I, I like to play with everybody. You know, that's my thing. Um, I like to creep you out and, and you know, have fun a little bit. Um, but I'm actually very, very sweet. So it's not, it's not out of being cruel. It's out of being mischievous. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It, 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 yeah, mischievous is fun. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, I got one more question from the chat, and then we're going to go back to talking about the band. Um, okay. So Megan, she is... God, she tunes into almost every single one of my shows. She's it's pretty, Hi, it's pretty awesome to to have a, a fan like that, you know. As you know, um, but anyways, she wants she has two questions. She wants to know what kind of um, what are your favorite flowers? Wow, I actually know the answer to that. My favorite flower is a French tulip, a yellow French tulip. Because if you ever see an authentic French tulip sitting in front of you in a vase, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's not, um, you know, it's not like, it's not a, a rom, a rom, aromatic, like it, you can't smell it. But it's just really beautiful and it's a French tulip. And then the second, my second favorite flower is a daisy. Just a plain daisy because I had them all over my front yard when I was a little, a little kid and I used to roll in it. Used to roll in it. <laughs> a white daisy, yes. Well, it was like the, probably the most girly thing that I could do when I was a little one because gotcha. everything else was tomboy. But I, I loved the white daisies in front of my house. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, so how often does the band get together and practice? I mean, now obviously I understand when you're out on the road, you don't need to do that. But you know, when you're not on the road, I guess what do you guys do to kind of keep everything uh, fresh and you know fine tuned? Well, we used to, when uh, Chris used to live here in L.A., you know, he was he lived next door to us. So we both have houses here um, in L.A., and uh, he was attending Musicians Institute. So he graduated from there and um, lived right next door to us. So we practiced, at that time, we practiced every day for four hours, um, with the exception of weekends. And even on the weekends, sometimes we would get together for a couple of hours just to run through an idea or something like that. So... Uh, Chris is constantly writing guitar riffs and constantly playing on his guitar. He's got a lot of cool guitars, and he does it every day. Um, so we would get together every day for four hours, three or four hours to write, to rehearse. Um, you know, Stitch has joined us just uh, in September of last year, so he wasn't really here during that time, the writing process and the rehearsal process. But nowadays, um, Chris, you know, moved to Michigan. He's in, he's in uh, Mount Pleasant. Uh, but, you know, we will fly in together and go to retreats. So, like, in May this year, we went for a whole week and a half to New Orleans for inspiration and kind of got away from our daily lives and families so we can go focus on writing. Um, and we wrote three new songs, which we played on this last tour, um, and people seem to really like the new songs, so they're going to probably be on the new album. Um, and then when we were in Mount Pleasant, we had, like, three days off um, after the tour, and we wrote another song on uh, that. So, um, you know, we did that in the garage at his uh, mom's place. And, uh, yeah, I think I took everybody through that garage on my live feed, uh, the play in the snow one. But, yeah, we're, we're constantly writing. And what we do when we're away from each other is we send it through iPhone and email. 
and our ideas and we kind of put them together um, and then Chris kind of pulls them all together um, and, and tries to combine all the tracks um, for a better idea. But then we get together and, and we finish it. Right. Nice. Well, and the beauty of the internet, you know, uh, how you guys yep. can, you can do your work and you don't have to be in the same state. It's pretty sweet. Correct. Yep. Correct. Now, we're, we're thinking about moving um, in the next couple of years, um, maybe up to Michigan, um, maybe Georgia, maybe, uh, you know, Colorado, something like that. I'm kind of still debating. Uh, it's hard for us to leave home here in L.A. You know, right. Been, I was born and raised here, so family and everything. But, um, you know, we want to really focus on touring, so um, we might end up doing that for the sake of rehearsing and, and writing. Right. We might get together and live in Michigan for about a year or two. I was going to say, you're, uh, we can live in Michigan where it snows, and or we can live in Georgia where it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, and, and we you know we made some contacts with friends and, and just people in general, great people, and you know there's some opportunities for us. Um, so we, we're still deciding. We haven't made the decision yet. Well, best of luck with that decision process. Um, I'm Thank sure. You. I'm sure whatever you choose will be in the be will be the, for the best interest of the <laughs> of the band. So correct, correct. Well, we want to be out there more and seeing everybody. So you know we'll be mainly on the road. Our our home will be the road. That's how it should be, right? Yep, it should be. Yeah. Well, so have you guys? So you just got off this tour. Um, have you started planning the next one? And does the East Coast fall into that? If you are for twenty eighteen. Uh, well, we we have a very very strong fan base in the East Coast, so we always make it a point to go there. Um, I think what we've discussed is instead of doing an around the U.S. tour, coast to coast, that we've been doing all this last year, is that we may be doing shorter tours, like three-week tours, and just concentrate in certain regions. Oh, uh, right. But definitely we will be back in the, to the east coast and the northeast. Uh, so we might do like a three-week run from, you know, the whole northeast to, to like down to Florida and come back up, you know, kind of a little triangle yeah. uh, route. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we're definitely talking right now with a few people in our agent. You know, we have a booking agent. And a lot of people, I do want to say this, because a lot of people say, well, when are you coming here? And, and, you know, they don't realize that we have booking agents that handle all of our, you know, our tours and routing our tours through different cities and states. So we don't have as much control of that. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, technical details. I mean, right. the venue has to be available, you know, what other bands are booked there already, dates, timing, you know, traveling from one city to another in another state is six, eight hours. So, you know, sometimes it just doesn't fit the, the mapping, you know, the routing. Uh, but, you know, we always make a point of like, well, we didn't go, for instance, Minnesota. We didn't go with Psycho Stick uh, to Minnesota. And we have a huge, you know, fan base in Minnesota. And we have a lot of friends there. So, you know, the next tour, we're going to try every effort in telling our agent, please make sure Minnesota's in here, you know, for this next one. Um, but, we, you know, I feel confident that we'll get to everyone in different areas uh, throughout the year, you know, not on every single tour. Um, but it, it does it does take its toll on us. And right. then if we do a support tour, we have absolutely no control. We're going on their tour as a support band. So right. we follow whatever route they, they've selected. Um, so, you know, it was a bummer like this one. We didn't get to go to Minnesota. Um, and, you know, our fans were bummed. But, you know, we'll see them next time in the spring. Um, I think the spring one, I think we're trying to do a, a big support tour, um, so we won't have control over that, but we will do, most likely do a, a headliner tour this, in 2018, oh, cool. uh, where we will have control, you know, I have my favorite venues and our favorite areas, so, right. yeah. um, those would definitely, you know, be more personalized to us, um, but yeah, yeah, so we'll be definitely spring, um, touring in the spring. I just don't know with who yet or if we're going to do it on our own. Very good. Any um, any discussion about going like to Europe or South America or anything like that? It's funny you brought that up. We were offered a tour for Europe in uh, January, February for six weeks, <laughs> and we had to we had to turn it down. We had to decline because you know just timing and we're we have studio time booked uh, to do the new album, and you know the part of the reason why we didn't work on our album you know, latter part of 2017 is because we were touring. So we were like, you know, we can't keep touring and, and not finishing, you know, not giving our fans a second album. Right. Everyone's very anxious for it. So, you know, we put the fans first and said, you know, we're, we're going to 
go in the studio and finish our second album. Nice. Um, so yeah, what's, your, what's the ETA with um, with the next album? Um, well, right now we're scheduled for mid-January through mid-February recording. Um, so we're thinking it's going to take three, four weeks for recording all the parts. Um, and then, of course, we spend like a couple weeks just kind of listening to the mix and fine-tuning what we like, what we don't like, um, adding, um, do, adding and subtracting. <laughs> and then... Uh, you know, then mixing and mastering. So we're thinking April, like we're hoping for that. Um, but it, it all, all depends. I mean, you, we can say whatever we want, but the reality is once we get in the studio, you know, when you feel something, right? Um, like I might do a vocal track and, and this is how we, we wrote it, but then I get in there and we start playing with, you know, my, my doubles or adding harmonies and things like that, that now that two-day recording for that song becomes a week. <laughs> right. But it's better for the song. So, you know, we get inspired in the studio as well. So, you know, we'll, we'll just create different sounds and different different um, ideas while we're in the studio tracking. So, you know, it's fun. It's fun, and it's a it's an entire experience, and we, you know, we want to embrace that. We don't want to rush it. And hopefully that shows in the music for you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, are you going to use the same studio that you used for the first album? And, and if so, who we is are, that? Yeah, we are working with Ulrich Wild again for the second album. Um, he's our producer, um, Worm Group. And, uh, yeah, so we, we've been working with him now for, I think, four years now, I think. Um, but, yeah, he's amazing to work with. And he's my favorite part about working with Ulrich, and I've said this before, is that he doesn't mess with us until we're kind of like, and he listens along the way. But he really allows us, he wants, he actually encourages it for us to stay organic in our writing process without his influence. Nice. Um, so that it's truly our music, um, what we've created organically. And then, you know, he'll come in there and give suggestions. And I love that because I feel, and, and I don't know if there's truth. I mean, there's got to be truth to this, but some bands may go in there and work with a producer that he basically almost writes their music. So I feel that there's a disconnection when that happens. Um, you, you know, it's not you writing it because for me, like, lyrically, I have to write my lyric because I connect to, to the meaning of those lyrics. So when I perform it or when I sing it or I growl it or scream it, it's I own it. You know, like, I'm connected to those words. Um, and so there's more meaning and more emotion behind that. Uh, whereas if somebody wrote it for me, you know, I, I don't know how. I can try to connect to it, but I, I think it's not the same. Yeah, right on. No, I respect that. And I think you're right, though. I think a lot of bands go into the studio and the uh, producer kind of takes over and it definitely changes the <laughs> the music, unfortunately. Yeah, and then you can, you know, you if you can, I think people are pretty smart and people vibe and they know when you're connected to something and when you're not. They know when you're just up there playing an instrument and just, you know, just get going through the motions. Right. And they know when you're attached to it. And you're feeling it because, and that's very important to me. And I've always said, I, I don't think I'm a very good singer. I, you know, I, I think that I'm an emotional singer. So I've always said that I said, I, I never care about impressing anyone with notes or my range or anything like that. I'm more about connecting with them and what I'm doing. Um, and I like, I literally do like cracks and snarls and, you know, breath. In, in singing, in performing live. That's why I love performing live. It's, you know, we don't use backing tracks other than, you know, the filler instrumental between songs on a set. Uh, we have an intro track and, and some tracks for ambience um, during the set in between songs. But during a song, we're fully live. So if there's mistakes, if there's any, you know, anything in there, um, it, you're going to get it. And, and I want you to. Right. <laughs> No, right. That that shows that you're real. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I want you to hear me crack because that means I really got into that lyric or that you know that it just it's that emotion. <laughs> well, and I'm going to disagree with you. I think your voice is amazing, um, and, oh, and, and I know that uh, uh, Grace, who I mentioned earlier, her husband um, Mike, uh, DJ Thunderhead. He um, he's a huge fan as well. And, awesome! Thank you, guys. And he just posted in the chat that you um, are, you do a killer job at this with the scream. He says, "Just scream, sing all of it." <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, one of our songs coming up on this next album, I think, is going to be, you know, me growling and screaming the whole song. We, we wanted to give that treat to our fans, you know, one song where I'm not singing. And then maybe one song where I'm singing all the way through. So everyone gets what they want. <laughs> I just, I just, you know, you start off singing very melodic, and then you go into the screaming, and then back to, I, I don't know, I just think it flows really, really well. And I Thank think you. your voice is very good, you know, because I'm a metalhead, okay? I don't want to hear pop, you know. I know, it, I know, it, I hear that a lot. <laughs> and your voice is just, it's like, it's that perfect balance for 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 your genre, for the metal. Thank you. Strike yeah, the fact. Yeah, we were scared about that. I mean, originally, we're like, how is this going to, like, work on the female? You know, um, I, I didn't want to ruin my singing voice. So I actually, you know, trained with somebody and, and asked a lot of my friends who are, you know, screamo. They do, like, thrash metal and hardcore music. And I asked them advice. I, I asked them to teach me, you know, their technique. And it took me a year and a half of practicing and training myself to create my own technique that works for me. And I always say that to everybody, all the females that have asked me, you know, I'm, I'm a singer, but I want to scream, but God, I mean, like, how do you switch? Or, you know, they ask me questions like that um, at a show, and I say, you know, you've got to train your voice and your muscles and your technique. you got to create your own technique, um, you know, and study every technique that's correct out there and then make it your own that works with what you do. Um, and it took me a year and a half. I mean, if you go back to our original music from Raven Black Project, I didn't scream at all. You know, I only sing. So, you know, it's it's one of those things I just don't, I hate to see anybody go and ruin their, their voice. Right. You know, or damage, damage their chords because, you know, screaming is, is fun and it's cool and it, people like it. And, but don't damage yourself over it, you know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't ruin the good voice too, you know. Yeah. And the melodic thing, I was scared because I was like, you know, metalheads and, you know, and then, you know, even my bandmates, you know, guys generally metal in the metal community, they're like, I don't really listen to female friend metal because it's just not, it's, I don't like it, but I can listen to you. I don't know why. And I was like, and that was before my screaming. And they said, there's just, you know, you've got that grit in your voice or something like yeah. that. And I was like, okay. Well, in my froggy voice. <laughs> well, here, here's, here's the thing that I, I notice about your singing. Um, you know, a lot of bands you can listen to, whether they're male or female, and you listen, and if nobody told you who it was, you'd be like, well, it could be this person, or it could this be, or that person, you know. When I hear your voice, I know, it, I know it's you. It's, 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 it has, a, you have an original sound that a lot of other female singers don't, and, you know, I'm probably in the minority. I know Mike is with me on this one, you know. I love female fronted uh, metal bands. I just, again, and a lot of the ones I listen to, like you, they do the good. The, they do the the great melodic singing, but then they also do the screaming. You know, there's yeah. uh, a band called uh, Car Chaos. They're from over in Europe, and uh -huh. you know she can sing. <laughs> oh my God! But then she can scream too. And you know, it's just to me, it's just a great balance because you know I don't want to just hear all screaming, and I don't necessarily yeah. just want to hear all melodic. I, I love the mix. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I. I kind of like watched a lot of female fronted bands from all over the world. I mean, you know, they're amazing. I mean, I'm I'm still very new at all this, so you know, I'm I'm humbled by any compliments about it because, <laughs> like, you know, I just I I mean Maria Brink, you know, um, it just it's I I watched that and I watched her career and I just kind of like amazing to me, um, and she's doing a lot more singing now. You know, maybe just you know she's had a long term career, so maybe she's trying to like let her voice relax a little bit, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, people don't realize, um, it, you know, especially touring, and Maria's been touring for how long, right, I've only toured this last year, you know, and this last run, six weeks, I did, what, 31 shows, and, you know, we had, what, three days off, and I did that every night, and I can see, you know, eight years down the road, you know, you gotta, like, worry about your, you know, your voice and stuff like that, right. so I, I totally respect that, and, I see these women that have been doing this for years, and I, I hope I can last that long. <laughs> I hope I'm doing the proper technique. You know, that's all I can hope for, and, right. and make sure that I, I see my vocal coach and make sure I check into all of that and, and that it's all good. Very good. Very cool. Okay, I have another question from the chat. Mikey D, he wants to know, if there was a movie made about the band, who would play who? 
You mean like actors and actresses? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I, I have like this, uh, I love the Ellen Page, um, the actress Ellen Page. She did Juno. She's kind of a, kind of an out of the box actress. She plays a lot of roles of a very dark, you know, mischievous female uh, with a lot of strength and rebellion. Uh, I would probably say I would love for her to, to play my role. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, for male, God, who do I think of for the guys? I don't know about the guys. There's so many good actors, but definitely somebody kind of off the wall would definitely have to play each of us um, because then they could, could get into the character more. And there's going to be so much more information on each of our characters, like each of our personas, because the comic book's going to tell the story. Yeah. Right now, everyone's getting the music, which is like the discography to our story. Um, and I don't know if people realize or connect that yet. And that's why we did the comic book teaser uh, to let everybody know it's coming. And they're going to understand, like you will understand a lot more about who we are, who is Raven, who is the Doctor, who Stitches, who's Muffet, and why are we who we are. So there's a whole backstory to it, um, you know, in this first issue. So the issue is who we are and how we came to be. Um, and then second second issue will be, you know, more of an adventure um, of something we've experienced together on our travels. Awesome. Um, and then just kind of like a little, what do you call it, a little leak, um, spoiler alert, um, you know, in the future we will, we may or may not add fans to our story, fan characters. Yeah, nice. Um, so it'll be an ongoing, you know, real life um, story, you know, with, with the experiences we've had with people we've met. Nice. Is that so? Is that going to be in physical print too? I hope. Uh, we're gonna. I right now. I'm going through the process right now of working with the digital and print suppliers. You know, creators. Um, and I. It's all about timing. So we definitely want to release something. So we may go digital first to get it out there. Right. And then it'll go to print. And okay. and obviously print right now, their turnaround time is like thirty days. So we're still completing. The art, you know, the actual comic book now. So I don't know if we'll have print ready by spring. We may end up doing the print a little later just because of the timing to create them, to actually print them. Okay, very good. Well, I'll be on the lookout for sure. So, yeah, and we'll probably do something silly and surprising that's like, you know, the first hundred released and then, or pre-order or something like that. Right. Yep, that makes sense. So, so, with with all this touring that you've you've been able to do recently, have you guys had any um, anything crazy happen uh, while on the road that you're willing to talk about? Anything crazy? Anything crazy happen on the road this tour? It could be good. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Well, you know what? Uh, there's always crazy stuff happening on the road. It's usually amongst all the bands <laughs> touring touring. Um, we, we broke our awning on this touring on the brand new RV. Um, last tour, there was a lot more excitement because we broke our axle. Oh, jeez. And, and, you know, That's so not we, had, we got towed away. But this last one, it was pretty smooth. I mean, it's been such a fun tour. Um, and we, you know, this tour, different from other tours we've done, is that we have this crazy, like, brotherhood between all the bands on the tour. So we had fun, and we were going out to eat together and hanging out and, you know, hanging out in each other's trailers and, and just hanging out, being friends, and that was really cool, this last tour. So, yeah, so good story is uh, we've made some really, you know, bonded friendships with some people, with other musicians from other bands on this last tour. Uh, really cool, you know. That's awesome. Just keeping in touch with them. Uh, so we have friends. You know, we always make friends every tour, and we meet these, you know, different people, and... uh for me personally, I, I get touched by many different um, people I meet. You know, there's, uh, I can think of one right now that was very special to me. Um, his name is Eric, and he's on our Facebook. Um, but Eric has MS, and, you know, his, his friends and him, they drove him there, and they took three hours to get to our Cleveland show. And he had a flare-up that, that day because of the cold weather, and he couldn't even stand um, so they, but they brought him and they carried him in and he was right up the stage with me. Um, and he'd never seen me live, but he's been following us since for like a year. So this was his first time seeing us live. And then, you know, he couldn't really stand. He exuded all the energy that he could to watch the set. 
Right. And so they got him a chair, and they sat him out, you know, in the back, and, and I had, I was at the merch table meeting everyone else, and I, I said, no, 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 bring Eric over here, and he's going to hang out with me all night. And him and I were, you know, shooting shit, chatting about, you know, and he didn't always have MS. You know, he got his MS in his early 30s. So he used to be in the mosh pits, and, and he was telling me a story. And, you know, for me, like I'm talking about that wheelchair, you know, it's amazing to me. And then, you know, the hardest part was me watching them leave because they had another three-hour drive home. And he, he was done. Like, he couldn't stand. He couldn't walk. He, he had Kate, and he was done. His body was like, I'm done. You know, <laughs> right. I'm done. Take yep. me home. I need rest. And watching his, you know, his friend, and I met both of them, and, and watching them carry him to the car, you know, and I, w- I was really touched by that because he did that to support us. You know, like, to me, that's, like, life-changing for me personally that someone cares enough that much about what we're creating, you know, and, and God, you've got to appreciate that. You right know, you've got to feel blessed and, you know, thankful for, for something like that. And it's like, you know, I, I just things like that. And then another gentleman, you know, Michael, um, he's, he runs a promotional company and, um, it's zombie, not uh, plug, shameless plug. Sorry, Michael. No, zombie no please keep plugging. But, you know, he brought his whole crew and, and they did an interview with us live, um, in our RV. And, but Michael was like sitting there, you know, speechless. He said, um, he didn't, he said, I'm, I'm just being a fanboy right now. I, I don't, know what question to ask um but he has been through some really dark moments and what he shared with me is you know he was kind of at rock bottom and our music helped him um so that again is super life-changing for me as a person um that i can affect anybody in that way you know and help them is amazing to me you know so those so things like that those are the amazing stories for me on tour um, that I get to connect with different people from all over the world that I never would have met if I wasn't doing music um, and helping them, you know, in that that one moment that they listened to a song or something or heard something I said or, you know, whatever. And there's, so, there's a lot of different stories, um, even online when we're off tour. But on tour, you meet them in person, and there's that physical, like, wow, like, this is real, you know. Like, I, I actually helped you, like, thank you. You know, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for allowing me to be that. Oh, hell yeah. That's, I mean, that's just amazing. That's awesome. It kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about, you know, I kind of feel like you have this desire to want to help people. So it just kind of, you know, when it, when it falls in your lap, I mean, it's got to be an awesome yeah, experience. It, it is. It's, it's life changing. It's yeah. like really, like if, like I always say, if I died tomorrow and didn't wake up, tomorrow morning, you know, died in my sleep. I've done everything I wanted to do up to that last breath. Like, as of today. You know, I have people that I love. I've I've helped people. I've done everything. I'm doing music. I'm creating. I'm happy. You know, I'm truly happy. And, and, you know, it has nothing to do with material stuff, money, nothing. You know, just none of that applies. Like, politics, religion, none of that applies at all. So I feel really lucky. Yeah, very good, very good. Okay, speaking of shameless plugs, let's uh, let's plug where people can go to find out more about Raven Black again. What okay. um, social networking and so websites? Facebook. So it's www.facebook.com forward slash Raven Black Band. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, and one other thing I meant to ask you earlier when 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 we were talking about that is. What about, like, merchandise and stuff? Where can they buy that? Um, we have a Facebook store. They can also go to Shopify. So it's www.shopify.com forward slash Raven Black Band. Um, Big Cartel forward slash Raven Black Band. Uh, they can go on, uh, well, the CD, they can get it on Amazon, iTunes. Uh, there's Spotify streaming. Um, so, you know, everybody's... You know, not everybody always has money all the time, but we definitely do want them to listen to our music. Um, And then Facebook, of course, has the shop. So those are all the avenues you can buy merch. Um, We are sold out on a lot of stuff. I noticed that. (laughs) We will be replenishing soon. Um, I'm designing some new stuff. Um, You know, we do all of, we do everything ourselves. You know, we, 
we are on Warm Group label, which is our, you know, our music, um, but it's specifically to the music. So, um, but as far as merch, you know, all the designs that you see, all the artwork, that's, that's all us, you know, and so I always, it's very important for me that everyone that already has everything has something new um, to add to their collection. So I'm constantly creating, and I love art, so I'm now, you know, challenging myself to create more art and more, you know, cool stuff that, that they can collect, and, uh, you know, it's a constant reminder to them um, of us and our music and stuff. So right now I actually just literally designed uh, a couple of new shirts, so we'll, we'll be adding those to the store uh, probably right after the, you know, New Year. Yeah, because I noticed... Stay tuned. Because <laughs> I, I was on, I was on there looking, and there was a. Po- I was like, "Oh, that poster's badass! It would look great po- hanging into my office where I do all my music stuff." And then I looked, and it was sold out. I'm like, "Oh no!" Which one? Uh, I'll have to. I have to hit. I don't have it open right now to see, but. Um, yeah, it, I think it, right now we only have the faces one, which is the four of us with the black and white. Um, we have the comic book teaser poster, which we only released on tour, but. We only have a few left, so I I po- posted that, um, and we'll probably only sell it through the end of the year, and then we'll cut it off. Right. And they'll go into archive um, because those are the teaser posters, so they won't re- be reprinted again. Right. So you know that's kind of stuff that I I I wanted to create things like like that they become limited edition, so that in the future they they have some some value right. to the people that were there in the beginning. Yeah. I'm really out of it about the beginning um you know it's fine and dandy when we get bigger and and you know we were more popular but you know i will always remember the people that were there in the beginning (laughs) that's very cool very cool yeah (laughs) okay well i tell you what i could talk to you for another hour with zero problem unfortunately (laughs) unfortunately i have another interview i have to do so they, they better be they better do as good an interview as you did. That's all I can Aww, say. They, thank you. they have, um, they, I have high expectations of them now. Um, <laughs> but before I let you go, is there anything else you want to make sure the listeners and the fans know about Raven Black? Anything we didn't talk about that you want to make sure that they know? I do. I want everyone to know that we're not just a band that puts on costumes and makeup just for the sake of doing that. We actually are you know, a full persona of who we are. What you see is an, an actual character, and that's our inner self. Um, it's actually who we are. We're not acting, you know, we're, we're actually, that's a part of our inner self that we're sharing with you. So don't be afraid to get to know us. Um, make sure you pick up a copy of the comic book when it comes out and the new CD, um, and then that way you get the opportunity to kind of put those two together, the story and the music, um, and then you'll get to know us better. Um, and become closer to us. Very good, very good. Okay, just so you know, and the fans and everybody tuned in, I, I will be playing more later, but I am, as soon as I get done, as soon as we get off the line here, I'm going to play Voices in 13. Um, like I mentioned off air, uh, 13 is like one of my favorite tracks now on the Thank album. You. So definitely going to play that. And then we'll, there's a couple of tracks left that I have not played yet tonight. I'll make sure to throw them in uh, awesome. while I'm still on air. So by the end of the night, the whole album will have been played. So that's pretty cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Uh, we hope you enjoy the music. Um, and thank you for all the support. Yeah. So one last thing before I let you go. If you could make a quick uh, radio tag for me, you know, just, you know, say this is Raven and you're listening to... Uh... Whoa, Hello, Devastation Radio. Yeah, hold on. I got... Cancel Skype here for a second. Hey, what's up? Hey, I'm going to call you right back, okay? All right, sounds good, man. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was the next band. <laughs> I know, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, yeah, so just, you know, Raven and, you know, from Raven Black, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio, something like that. Okay. Ready? Yeah, go. Okay. Hi, this is Raven from Raven Black, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you again for Thanks taking. So much, t- Thank you so much again for taking time to the interview. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. I much appreciated. Thank you. Please tell the rest of the you know tell the other guys that I said hello and uh, we'll keep uh, playing playing your tracks and keep helping push and promote the band as well. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And make sure you send me that link so I can post it, okay? Yep, I sure will. Awesome. All right, you have a good night. Yeah, you too. Take care. Okay, you too. Yep, bye. bye.